says, the resurrected king yeah. is resurrecting me. Jesus, out of all the billions of people that have lived on earth, he's the only one that conquered death. And, and one of the things he said about himself that no other human has ever said is I'm the resurrection and the life. That he promised that whoever believes in him, though he die, will live forever because he conquered one of our greatest enemies and that was death. And today that same resurrection power is available to you. It's there to help me and you in our what looks like sometimes impossible situations. The scripture says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And that means when we call, God answers. I'll say it again. When we call, he answers. I remember when my, my daughter, she, uh, 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 Abriana, when she was four years old, she had cancer and, and, and she was at Loma Linda Hospital and and it was a surprise to us. She was getting sick and weaker every day, it seemed like. But we didn't know she had cancer. We just thought she had a really bad cold. Or, but it got so bad that she was having a hard time walking. And, and she was four years old. She was full of energy before. And it looked like she had no energy. We took her in after a vacation. We took her like that on vacation. We came back and it just seemed like it was getting worse. And when we took her in to the hospital, the doctor said, I regret to inform you your daughter has leukemia and and I and I knew that I'm not a doctor and I can't fix her and the only thing that I could do as a parent or or you could do when you're running into impossible situation is just begin to talk to God to be to, to intervene and I remember talking to Abriana at, at four years old and I just went to the side of her bed and I just wanted to teach her one little quick lesson for us to agree on something and I said baby you're sick but we're gonna ask God for help and when we ask God for help he's gonna help us and I remember asking her Abriana when we ask God for help what is he gonna do and I remember she had hardly any energy and she said this he's gonna help us daddy I go that's all we're gonna do that's all we could do so we ask God for help he's gonna help us and, and I think if a four-year-old could get that Maybe you could get that today. I know a lot of you are really like you're, you're strong and, and, and you, you know a lot. But there's, there, there are seasons in your life that you run into something that's beyond your experience, beyond your ability, beyond your strength. And it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to be weak and it's okay to say, I need some help. What I'm facing is beyond my ability and just say, God, help you don't have to, it not have to be perfect. Just say, help. God understands what you need help with. And he's not only willing, he's able to help you. How many, I mean, there's some people willing to help you. They can't help you. But God's willing and, and he's able to help you. And he has power to help. But uh, God loves you. And, and you could just start where you're at. If, if you just came here for the first time and you're saying, I'm not sure about all this God stuff. And that's okay, but you're here. And if you could just exercise a little faith. What is it going to hurt you to ask God for help? How could it hurt you? It could only give you some hope. Aren't we living in a world that has no hope? Come on, believing in God gives you some hope. And, you know, my daughter, you know, she's now, uh, I don't even know how old she is anymore, but she's older. But she made it through. She made it to her birthday number five, six, and now she's married and she has a little toddler herself. Isn't that good? Come on. There's all, God wants to give you a testimony that you could share years to come. And, and, if, and, and if you never went through anything, how would you even know that God can help? It's okay. When you're, the storm that you're going through, the difficulty you're going through, God wants to show up and show you how loving he is, how powerful he is, so you could come out with a testimony. Just like this cup, I was suicidal, I was full of anxiety, but I got a testimony. I asked for God for help. He set me free from the anxiety, from the depression, the suicidal thoughts, and he restored our marriage and then gave us some purpose. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of story? You could just give God the credit. Say, man, I couldn't do it, but he did it. Let's give the Lord one more hand. That's why we worship, and that's why we praise him, because he's a savior, he's a deliverer, he's a healer. 
And all things are possible for those that believe in him. We're going to pray today, and I'm gonna, we're going to go into study in the Bible. And that's what we do right now. And the Bible is God's word. It's inspired by God. Every, every part of it makes 100% sense. And who created love? God created love. A matter of fact, we're going to read something today that not only did God create love, he defines himself. And I talk to people all the time, everywhere, about, about God and faith in Jesus Christ. And, and once in a while, I run into an agnostic or an atheist, and, and, and they'll say, prove that there's a God. A God. And, and, and to me, that's pretty simple because if anybody's experienced even a tad of love, they've experienced God. And you can't take you can't take love and put it in a in a scientific laboratory and figure all that stuff out. And say, man, have you ever experienced something? I say, I have. Well, the Bible says that God is love. That's just a touch of who God is. Every single one of us want to be loved, and what you're looking for is God. And there's nothing like the love of God. How many get that? Come on, love of man, love of a woman. That's different. Love of a dog's pretty up there. Right? I mean, I have a little dog at home. Like, that's a high love right there. But God's love is higher than your dog's love. And you, I love my dog. God says, if you love your dog, I created your dog. And that kind of love that he has for you is the kind of love greater that I have for you. Come on, isn't that good? Come on. Your dog, you kick your dog and your dog still loves you. He don't even know why you kick him. Your dog will apologize after you kick him. That's messed up. Right? God loves you more than your dog loves you. Maybe that's the message. What'd you get out of that service? That God loves me more than my dog, and I love my dog so much. <laughs> you guys ready to talk about love tonight, today? Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, a principle of God that love is the atmosphere for things to grow. And your, your marriage won't grow without love. Ministries like this don't grow without love. Uh, if, if you, you won't grow emotionally without love. And, 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 Maybe you're in this room and your love got shut down by somebody that was unloving. And you used to love, but no longer do you love yourself. You don't love others. And bitterness and anger and doubt and just being sarcas sarcasm took over. And, and say, where's that love at? Where's that love at? Where's the smile at? You lost it somewhere. Hopefully today you could get it back and get your flow back. Get your power back. Come on. Get your growth back. How many, God, how many know God wants you to be loving he wants you to mature. He wants you to grow. So we're going to learn, we're going to learn about that today. Father, we just thank you. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, teach us today. You love us so much, and I, I love everybody here. I'm so glad everybody's here, even those that have come for the first time, that they would, this will not be their last time. They'll, they'll keep coming, and this will be their spiritual home where they hear from God, learn the Bible, raise godly families, and for some, they'll meet their wife or husband here, and for those that are married, they'll raise, Father, they'll have a solid marriage here. And, and Father, they'll find their purpose here. Some of us here coming for the first time, will, they'll find themselves a year from now in another country doing missionary work. It's, it's going to be awesome where you take us, Lord. We just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. So let's talk about this guaranteed principle that love is the atmosphere for guaranteed growth. Um, uh, today I want to talk about this statement, make love your highest goal. And there's a lot of goals that you could have in life. That means that you're going to put effort in life and, and all this effort is moving towards something that you want to accomplish or achieve. And there's a lot of things that you want to accomplish and achieve. It could be financial goals. It could be hashtag relationship goals. It could be, it could be if you're if you're a young person and you're in sports, it could be sports goals, it could be education goals, and there's nothing wrong with having all those goals. But but what's going to be your top priority or your highest goal that will be the most fulfilling and make you the most powerful? And and the Bible gives us that answer in First Corinthians fourteen one. It says, "Let love be your highest goal." Have you ever wrote that down while you're setting goals or at the New, at the new Year's resolutions that this is my goal. I want to become more loving. And if you made that your goal and you made it your highest goal, you'll be the most satisfied, the most powerful, and the most effective you've ever been. The only way that we're going to make love our highest goal is to let it be your highest goal. 
it, the scripture says, let love be your highest goal. You know what that means is that you're going to have to choose it. You'll never become more loving until you choose to be more loving. You'll never be a more loving husband, a more loving father, a more loving person, a more loving brother or sister until you let that happen. And to let that happen, you might have to let some other stuff go. That means you might have to let the bitterness go, the hurt go, the past go, and say, I'm going to let that go so I can start loving some people. Because you cannot have a goal to love people and also try to get back at them. Some of you guys are Christian gangsters. That means someone messes with you and you're ready to do a drive-by on them with your mouth and with your attitude or with your husband or with your wife. Some of us are really good at keeping records of what other people have done to us. Like, you're better than the record keepers at City Hall. I remember in 1984, I remember it was at 401 when you said this. And you'll never move on to love, love people until you let it happen. And to let it happen, you might have to take some inventory today and you're saying, I'm not becoming more loving. I become, I become more angry. I become more impatient. I become angrier. I become, I, I become harsh. I become cynical. I become critical. I become judgmental. I become religious, but not more loving. And you're wondering when that's that going to shift. It's going to shift when you make a choice. Let love be your highest goal. Love is a verb. The word let means follow. It means run after to pursue in order to catch. But he's saying when you're making love your highest goal, this is something you're pursuing intentionally. You're pressing on towards the goal to seek after eagerly in order to acquire. That means if you're going to become more loving, you must be intentional about it. I remember when God told us to start this church, God gave us instructions and I never knew how to, I didn't know how to start a church. I, how do you start a church? And God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to me. He says, go love the people. And I knew love was more than an emotion. He went, and I asked God, well, how do I love the people? And he said this, find their needs and meet them. Make a commitment to let love flow through you. If you find someone hungry, what I want you to do is go to Baker's, buy them a number one just like you like it. Get your burrito, fries, and a Coke and drop it off to them. Buy them groceries. If they don't have a fridge, buy them a fridge and let them know, I love you practically. It's a verb. It should have some action. It's not just some fluffy words. The word love is agape. So when he says a, let agape be your highest goal. Now, this, is, this word agape is a Greek word, and there's many, there's many types of love. I'm going to give you an example. We as Americans are very short-sighted when it comes to the depth of meaning of words because we use love for everything. Like, I love pizza, and I love you, honey. I love golf, and I love God. And, and, and what we do is we use this word love with everything, and we don't have different, we don't understand there's different types of love. Now, the Bible, when it says, let love be your highest goal, it says, let this type of love, agape, be your highest goal, which is the love of God. Say it with me. So it's a special love. And I'm going to say this, that not everyone has. Only those that have God have agape. I want you to, it's important, it's supernatural love. Now this word agape means this, seeking the highest good for others. Seeking, so what does this love do? Say it with me, seek the highest good for others. So when God agape is you, he's seeking the highest good for you. God's, God's intent for you is highest good. When God's giving you instruction, it's for your highest good. When God's directing you, it's for your highest good. When, 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 
when God is giving you a word, it's for your highest good. Everything that God is doing is for your highest good. God is good and he wants to lead you to your highest good. Isn't that good? Come on. The more leadable, the more great your life's going to be. But the word also means the acts of kindness and charity. That means that love, this word love is not just a fluffy word, but it's, it's really acts of charity. We as a ministry, we have a, we have a, a distribution center, a little a, a warehouse where we get food. We have trucks that go pick up food, and we have all the food organized in this warehouse. We have every little box and every little thing we have in there is numbered. And this is what we do. During the week, we distribute it. These are acts of love and kindness to the hungry and the needy. How many know that's good? That's, that's love in action. This word love also means, it means being generous or having a readiness or willingness to give without meanness or smallness. That means that when God is ready to give to you and show you love, he don't think, well, what's the least I could do for them? This is what God thinks about. What's the most I could do for them? And we as believers should not be stingy with the blessings God has given us. Now, you know, when, when we're walking with the love of God, this, this is a question we, we should be asking. We should be asking, what is the most I can do, the most I can give, so that I could be the biggest blessing? When God is given, he, let, he doesn't do it with meanness or smallness of thinking. Do you know that you could actually do a, a, the right thing with the wrong spirit? That I means I mean, someone's hurting, and instead of doing it with love and kindness, you're doing it with meanness and smallness. That means we as believers, if someone needs shoes, don't get the shoes with the holes and give them to them and say something like this. You should at least be thankful you got something. We as believers should give with agape. And when we're giving with agape and we're loving with agape and we're doing ministry with agape, this is what we're thinking. How can I be the biggest blessing? Go above and beyond. Come on. Give them something that you'd want and give them the extra. Come on. Give them the extra. Right? The other, and yesterday I was driving by. Not a big deal. But I'm driving. I, I, was, I did a wedding this um, yesterday. And as I'm leaving... There's a couple that's waving cars down. And I could see, like, I'm passing by, and I could see them, like, waving, like, car, cars down. And I'm like, no one's stopping. And I, I go, well, I, they looked at me. I looked at them. We made eye contact. I go, okay, let me pull over. What's up? <laughs> well, this is what I found out. But why would I stop? Agape is why I stopped. It's the only reason I'm stopping is because agape doesn't allow someone in need and just run, walk by. I just can't walk by them. So I stopped. And they said, how can I? I go, how can, what's going on? So our car um, ran out of, um, no, we need a jump. Uh, it's on, and I don't know if they're going to jump me. But I go, you need a job. I'll take you for your word. I, get, I, I told the wife or the girlfriend or whatever, get in the car. I was in my truck, so the guy went in the back. I go, I can handle her. <laughs> you some agape wisdom too. You know? <laughs> no, because I began to witness to her. And I began to share to her, uh, share the, the good news. And I told her this. Because I'm looking out for her highest good. I know she needs a jump, but she needs something greater than a jump. She needs an encounter with Jesus Christ. She needs to be saved. She needs to be set free. And I know Jesus is the answer. And I told her in John 10.10, 10, I go, the Bible says this, that the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But I, but I have some good news for you, that Jesus came to give you a rich and satisfying life or an abundant life. And the reality is, until you choose the right leader, it's going to be continued loss. You're going to feel like you're going around in a circle and nothing's going to change. If you want your life to change, choose a new leader. God wants to give you something. I'm pe right now, we're going we're gonna to jump your car. But I believe God wants to jump your life. That was in a few minutes. 
oh, thank you so much. That's what I needed. I needed it. I don't need a jump. I need this. I go, that's exactly right. But why would I stop and why would I share the reason I put my life on the line and the reason I would stop and the reason I would share is because agape puts, come on, lays down his life for others to make sure that they get the highest good. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. Let's make high, agape our highest, our highest call or our highest goal. Is God good? He's a good God. Okay, now, when, when Jesus met needs... He didn't do with meanness or smallness of thinking. When, when he fed the 5,000, five, what 5,000? There were 5,000 people that were following him, 5,000 men that were following him and they were hungry. And somehow a discussion happens between him and his disciples. And his disciples said something like this, send these people away. And then Jesus says, no, we should feed them. And the disciples said, but we don't got nothing to feed them. And, he, and, and, and Jesus was saying, yeah, we got love. And when we got love, we got everything that we need. And Jesus already knew that he was connected to the provision of God. Every time that you're walking in love, you're the most powerful you could ever be. God will never reveal a need to you that he will not be able to meet through you. That's why he told the disciples, don't go out with the money. You don't have to go with a lot of money. You don't have to go with a change of clothes. What you need to do is go out there with a message and go out there with my love. And if you go out there with my message and you go out there with my love, my power, my provision will be right there, partnering up with you to make sure that my abundance is there. So now they want to feed the 5,000. But I just want to show you that when God is meeting needs, he don't meet them with the least, least or small thinking. It's going to help somebody right now because you're praying and you're almost like praying, like begging. And God is saying to you, I'm a God of abundance. And when I do things, I don't give you the least. I give you the most I could give you because I want to be the ultimate blessing to your life. I hope that helps somebody that right now you're praying and God, you don't have to twist God's arm to be blessed. God wants to bless you generously. But look, at, look how he did it here in Matthew 14, 20. They all ate. So Jesus takes five loaves and two fish. He prays over it. God's abundance is on it. They all ate. Who ate? Uh, they all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. This is a result of God's love, his kindness, his goodness, his abundance, abundance his 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 readiness to give after was done the need wasn't only met everybody ate as much as they wanted it was like all you can eat buffet and then have you ever went to a buffet how many like buffets all right how many like how many like buffets but i like buffets especially if you're really hungry and i always want to get my money's worth hey, amen come on right some of you right now they have to kick you out of buffet because they're going to go out of business, right? I'm going to get my money's worth, right? But, but the idea is never do you go to a buffet and they give you containers to go. But when God blessed these guys, he gave 12 full baskets to go. What God is saying, when I get ready to bless you, my agape love does not only meet the need, it meets the need above and beyond whatever you could ask or think. Give God some praise. That's what agape is. And he wants us to get that kind of mindset. Stop doing the least you could do and start doing the most you can do. Amen? Now, when we make love our highest goal, remember it's a choice, right? We have to let it happen. Number two, making love our highest goal is choosing to make God our highest goal. Now, when I say love is my highest goal, this is what I'm saying. God is my highest goal. So why would, why would God be my highest goal? Because God is love. Look at the scripture here in 1 John 4, 7. We as believers understand this. It's not how much Bible you know, which you should know the Bible. But you're not going to be known in the spiritual realm or you're not going to reveal God to others by just how much Bible you know. One of the key ways to illustrate or reveal Jesus Christ to others 
is the love you walk in. They should experience a love that they've never experienced before. That means they were mean to you and you weren't mean to them. So that does never happen. Usually if I dish it out, I get it back. This is the first time in my life that I was mean to someone and they made me a birthday cake. Celebrating me, I would be angry with me, but there we go. It's the love of God. Always looking out for the best interests of others. Never ever get to the point that you're looking out for the worst interests of others. Never become a hater and never let some, someone take over your heart or the love of God in your life. Because once your mission has changed from hate, I mean from love to hate, you are no longer acting like a child of God. And this is what's going to happen. You no longer can do ministry. You're no longer going to see the power. You're no longer going to see the presence. You're no longer going to see the provision of God. How many want to see the power? Presence and provision, it's all in the love of God. But look at 1 John 4, 7. It says, dear friends, let us. Let again? It says, yeah, choose it. Let this happen. Let us. Say us. Us is. No, that's improper. So, oh, my, I'm an English major. No, I would never say that, Pastor Marco. Let us. Let, let who? Let who? Us. Couples right now that don't like each other, why don't you tell each other right now, let us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't stand. I just came right here for this. It was the last shot right here. If God doesn't come through right now, I'm going to send this guy to hell. <laughs> send him to hell four times this week already. <laughs> but this idea, let us, let us. Christians, let us. Let us continue to love one another. That means we don't start off loving each other. This is a lifestyle. I, see, as a believer, you don't fall out of love. You grow in love. I used to love my church. What happened? How did you stop Continue. When did God ever tell you to stop loving? Because God's love is unconditional. God never stops loving you. Come on, you're a hardhead many times. Aren't you glad that God didn't give up on you with your hardhead itself? God is he's not only giving you mercy, he gives you mercy every day. And how crazy would it be that you receive all this love, all this mercy, and someone just does you wrong once, twice, three times a lady... That's Lionel Richie for some of you guys back in the day, day. I love you now. once, twice, three times a lady. I love. No. <laughs> but what's the idea is you never stop loving. Who do you love? Everybody. When do you love? All the time. I don't let anybody conquer my love because to conquer my love is to conquer my pursuit. And my pursuit is God. Let us continue to love one another for love comes from, where does this supernatural love come from? Where does unconditional love come from? Where does this love that seeks the best for others come from? See, we're not born with this kind of love. We're born with selfish love. That means we'll manipulate people to get what we want. Be careful that you think your boyfriend loves you and he really don't love you. He's actually, this, what he loves is what you, how you make him feel. Well, okay. What I, what I mean by that is he might like what you do for him and he might say, give you flowers because he wants you to continue making him feel good. But then when you say we're no longer going to be sexually immoral and I'm not going to be here to make you feel good, all of a sudden no more flowers. Because the love that he's talking about is a Greek word, euros love, that has to do with romantic and sexual love. 
And that's what we, they use in the movies. Man, we're making love. No, you're having sex most of the time. And most of the time, it's lust, not love. And when you're in lust, at times you think you're in love because it feels so good. And you're thinking, how could something be so wrong if it feels so good? Another song. I think they should make a song like that. <laughs> We're going to go through an 80s checklist right here. <laughs> right? But you're mistaken. It's not love. It's lust. The love of God. Someone say the love of God. Love, But agape comes from anyone who loves is a child of and knows God. The proof that you're a child of God and you know God is not that you attend church. And I know it's a, a, a kind of a weird, I mean, an explanation probably you've heard before. Just because you're in a garage doesn't mean you're a car. Oh, man, that was deep, my pastor. I know. I'm trying to take you deeper places right now. But the idea is... The proof that you're a believer, the proof that you're a child of God is this, that he, anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. I don't know you know God because you're gifted or you're prophetic or you're talented. I know you know God when you're loving and kind. Isn't that good? But anyone who does not love does not know God. I know God. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know if you know God because you're pretty mean. I don't know if you know God because you're a slanderer. I don't know if you know God because you're always gossiping about people. I don't know. It's hard for me to know that you know God because you're so impatient, inconsiderate, selfish, self-centered, Greedy, right? I'm not saying that's you. I'm just, it, it, it'd be possible. That's not you. That's other person next to you. <laughs> there are people in this room that actually you were cussing people out this week. Like blankety blank, 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 and your mama too and everybody else. You're like. And then today you're like, hallelujah. You're doing a praise dance because you're trying to overcompensate for who you really are. But the only way I really know someone knows God is that they love. And the purpose of this lesson is for us to make God, make love our highest goal. And that's going to have to be a choice. But when you're making love your highest goal, you're making God your highest goal. Because this is what the scripture finally says. It says, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is, what is God? What is God? That's the idea. So if you're pursuing love, you're pursuing God. Every time, that's why the Bible says, what you've done to the least of them, you did to me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you came to me. What he was saying, you were doing all these things and you were looking out for the best interests of others. And when you were doing that, you were loving me. Because when you're loving others and seeking the best, come on, this is what we do. We seek the best for others. We don't seek the best for ourselves. I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you a key. When you seek the best for others, you'll always end up with the best. You guys got that? We love God. Now, making, making love our highest goal, number three, making love our highest goal is choosing to be like Christ. In, in the 90s or 80s or I don't know what it was, 90s, 80s, they had a campaign, be like Mike, Michael Jordan. That was a whole campaign, be like Mike and Michael Jordan. But this scripture is saying be like Jesus. 
well, how do I be like Jesus? When, when you're loving, when you choose to love, your goal is to emulate, imitate Christ. This world is looking for God. This world is looking for a Savior. This world is looking for hope. This world is looking for freedom. This world is looking for joy. This world is looking for peace. This world is looking for an answer to death. And all of those things that this world is looking for, Jesus does. If they'd find Jesus, they'd find their freedom. If they found Jesus, they would find eternal life. If they'd find Jesus, they'd find purpose and fulfillment. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What God is saying, show people Jesus. And how you show people Jesus is be like Christ. Well, how is Christ? Let's look at Ephesians 5.1. It says, imitate God. Who should we imitate? Imitate God. Who should we be imitating? You shouldn't be imitating anyone else but God. Stop trying to imitate the people in your neighborhood. Stop trying to imitate and emulate people on social media. I want to be like, I want to be like her. Do you know that her that you're trying to be like is depressed, suicidal, and full of demons? And all they do is show you their pretty pictures, doctored up pictures. You see them in real life, they go, who are you? I'm her. I'm really her. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I'm just saying that some of you guys are trying to imitate a fake, per, fake person. That's all. Amen. I want you to do this. Be, be you in Christ. Because you in Christ is powerful. You in Christ, you're happy, you're free. You're smiling, you have joy, you have peace, you're a healer, you're a deliverer, you cast out demons, you heal the sick, you give hope, you're an encourager, you're a builder, you in Christ is the best you. Look what it says. Ephesians 5.1. Imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do. So when we choose to make love our highest goal, our goal is to be like Christ. Imitate God in, in what? In everything you do. Shop at the supermarket like Christ. Well, how is that? Patient. Why is lying so long? There's only four baby formulas and there's four mamas there. Don't take all four. They're there too. Say, I got all four, but I'm going to distribute it. I'm going to keep two. I'm going to give you two. One of you guys got to pray for when I was kidding. <laughs> but do you understand that sacrificial if you did that? And if you did that, you'd be trusting in God that takes five loaves and two fish and feeds 5,000. And as you begin to do the right thing, you'll tap into the riches and the provision of God. God is saying, come on, make love your highest goal, not meeting your own needs, your highest goal. Imitate God in everything you what? The way you work. Don't be a lazy, lazy worker. Give your job more than expect. Stop do, being this lazy employee. Say, What's my job description? That's not even my job description. 
I'm not going to do that. Yet. I'm going to call the labor board on you. <laughs> and then you say, will you come to church with me? That, no, no. You're my most negative employee. Uh, and then you claim Jesus. That's why I don't like Christians. I don't go, I'll never go to your church, you lazy Praise the Lord. And everything you do, work with love. Come on. Be a father with love. Be a mother with love. Be in, come on, stand in line with some love. Be a, be, sit there and eat dinner with the waitress with some love. Which my rights. Stop being a, like an American. Start being, start being a Christian. Oh, praise the Lord. All right, praise the Lord. Because you are his dear children. Love, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you're, you're his dear children. Live a life filled with, make love your highest goal. Li, li, live a life filled with what? Not anger. Not pride. Not judgmentalism. Not lust. Not addiction, not unforgiveness, not self-centeredness, not manipulation, not lying, sexual morality, abusive words and actions, not apathy, hardness of heart, being cynical, but be filled with, it's going to be a choice. Everything I'm going to do, and I want you to get this. When I say be filled with love, or the Bible says to be filled with love, it's not being filled with this feeling. Oh my gosh, it's just the love is just overflowing. I love you so much. Kiss, 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 kiss. Hug, hug, hug. And I'm not saying that love won't, won't, won't practically be at times a hug. Because it can be that. But it's a hug whether you feel like it or not. At times it means loving someone and hugging someone that you actually want to punch. But can I be loving? I still want to punch him? Yes. You can like want to punch him, but then you hug him. And when you, you know what you did? You chose love. It's not a feeling. It's a choice to be like Christ, to be like to be like, I'm going to tell you this week you're going to be tested. There's going to be people, come on, they're going to be testing your love. When your love runs out, you need some agape love. Because when Jesus was on the cross, it was agape love that kept him on that cross. While they were beating him, while they were mocking him, while they were pulling his beard out, ripping his back bite open, putting the nails in his hands and his feet. When he, was, when he was on that cross, he goes, I am here for to give them the best that I could give them. And what they need is a savior right now. And he said this, you did not conquer my love. I forgive them for they know not what they do. They need some forgiveness. That's what I'm going to dish out. And this is it. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, as a pleasing aroma to God. See, if we are truly children of God, then we should resemble him. Like the old saying, like father, like son. People are looking for Jesus. May we be Jesus to the world in the sense that they could see him. They could see his love. Jesus said this, if you see me, you've seen the Father. And I really believe this. If you see me, you should see God. I'm not God, but you should see his character. You should see his love. You should see his patience. You should, come. You should have some resemblance to your loving Father. It's time to forgive your husband, forgive your wife, forgive your mother, your brother, your sister, your coworker, your boss. I'll even say this, your enemies and your abusers. And the reason you should, because until you do that, 
You can never love. You cannot receive love or give love. You know what's really happening until you choose to allow God's love to flow through you? You're a prisoner. And you're saying, man, I want to get rid of this depression. And God says, you can. But you're going to have to go ahead and receive forgiveness and get some. This is your moment. And the first step to receiving God's love is this, receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's knocking at your heart's door, but he can't come in unless you do this, repent. I realize I've not been loving, I've not been kind, I've, I've sinned against people, I've hurt them, but I want change in my life. Forgive me, Lord. Be willing to turn away from your sinful, lustful, self-centered life and say, I realize that's who I am. It's been about me, me, myself, and I. I'm tired of living this way because I'm hurting myself, I'm hurting others. Forgive me, Lord. I've offended you, I've offended others. I'm a walking offense. I'm tired of it. Change me. And if you do that and place your faith in Jesus Christ, this is what's going to happen. God's going to fill you with his spirit. And the spirit of God is love. And when God's spirit comes into you, he fills your heart with love. It's an amazing thing. Today, your life can change. God's not asking you to give something you don't have. He's saying, get it and give it. Let's all stand up. Awesome. Let's give the Lord a hand. He's a good God. How many received something from God today? Okay. Now, we're going to dismiss in just a second. But I want to make sure that before we leave this place, that we give an opportunity to get to first base. And the first step, first step, I'm not telling you to go out there and love people with your love. I'm telling you to do this. Get God's love and then go out there and love with the love you've received. Okay, that's how you do it. You can't go out there and agape if you don't have agape. You can't do it. First, you get the love of God and then you give the love of God. The scripture says, it says this, freely as you received, freely what? Give. Are you ready, and, and I, I'm talking to someone today, that you've been upset, you feel like you've been angry, um, and even have some unforgiveness because someone not maybe hurt you, they really hurt you. And you feel like the only way I could actually deal with this person, I got to put a wall up and I got to protect myself, and I understand that. But be careful that, that you're not using anger and a wall to protect you. Because as long as you do that, you have a wall up. This is what happens. Love can't come in and love can't go out. Really, when you put a wall up, who's the prisoner? You. You're living behind a wall. And today's your day to be set free. And you say, are you going to let them walk all over you? No, you're going you're gonna to stop them from walking all over you. Because the moment that you held on to the bitterness and anger and allowed yourself to be tough and get this persona, like, don't, you don't mess with me. You I don't teach you. Do you know who you're messing with? I, you, you know where I come from? I got, I, I. Until you get rid of that, you'll never experience love. And until you, don't, until you experience love, you're never going to be whole. You're never going to be complete. You're never going to feel for purpose, purpose. And I know this, you're stuck. Stuck. Praying. I want to reach people, but I'm stuck. It's time to get unstuck. It's time to get free. Okay. If today, I want the team to come up, but if today you're saying, Pastor, I want a new beginning today. I want forgiveness today. I want to open up my heart so God can fill me with his love. I don't have it. I got love, but I don't have his love. My, my love has a very short leash on it. Because I don't trust nobody. They've hurt me. I just, I don't want to let my guard down. God says, come on, let it down. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to empower you. Your best life. Come on, your best life is coming right around the corner. And what I'm ready to give you is going to be full. Complete. 
you might ask me, Pastor, do you, do, you, do you get drunk once in a while? Do you get high once in a while? And, and my answer is no. I said, why not? Fun. I go, the reason I don't, and I'll tell you why, because I'm already high. I already got joy. I'm already content. So I don't need something from the outside in. I'm flowing from the inside out. I'm someone's joy connection, peace connection, freedom connection. Come on, when I got the love of God, I got everything that I need. Now, if you're saying, Pastor, that's me, I want a new start in my life. I want forgiveness. I want to place my faith in Jesus. I want God to change my heart and fill my heart with love. I need to forgive someone. I'm going to say one last thing. If today were your last day on earth, do you know where you spend eternity? Yes, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm, this is the reality. You will have your last day on earth. And when you do, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? There's only one name to call on to save you, give you eternal life or forgive you. It's the name of Jesus. He died for your sins so you could have a new life. Come on, that's what it's all about. Jesus, you sinned. You deserve the, the punishment. God sends his perfect son to die for you so you can have eternal life. Now, you can receive the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Or you could reject it and understand this. That would mean that you would forfeit salvation and your eternity would be punishment, hell forever. And if you think you're miserable now, the misery is going to get deeper in eternity. It doesn't get any better. If you're suicidal, don't let that demon kill you. If you think you're miserable now, if you go into eternity and you never and you reject Jesus, the pain's going to get worse. It's not going to be better. Today's your day. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want forgiveness. I want a new start. Or I need to forgive someone. When I say three, raise your hands. One, this is your day. New beginning. New start. <clears throat> two, I need a new beginning. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands. Say, that's me. Awesome. Let's give, let's give the Lord a hand. They're <clears throat> raising their hands. Ask your neighbor. You, it's your day. I want those that raise their hands. I want you to. Do one, me one more favor. Will you give me the honor and privilege of praying with you? I believe that when you take a step, faith with action produces results. Faith with no action produces no results. There's a time in your life that you got to move in a direction. Today, if you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I need a new start. I want you to come up here. I want to be saved. I want to, come on, I need, I, I need to forgive. I've been holding on to resentment, anger. Couples, maybe you're, right now, you're, as a couple, you guys need restoration. If you come up here, I guarantee you the power to restore your marriage, restore your relationship is right here. It's not in those seats. It's over here. You got to take some action. Come on, you got to take some action. Don't sit there hungry. Come on, get it. Come on, get out of your seat. God wants to fulfill you. God wants to make you whole. God wants to set you free. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming up. Come on, today's your day. I know they hurt you. Let's forgive them anyways. God forgave you. Okay, awesome. Uh, I want to say one thing as they're coming up. Just so you guys know, at 1.15, we have lunch for you as well. Actually, at 12, you can go out to 12.45. We got lunch for you. We got membership class at 1.15. But at 12.45, we can start serving lunch. If this is your home church, this is what you got to do. You got to make it official and take the next step. The purpose of membership class is me as a pastor, know who I'm pastoring, who's part of the church. You'll make my day if you show up. I'm going to be there. I'd love for you to be there. You could go, you can hang out at our cafe, come back. But at 115, we're doing membership. I believe everyone needs a church home. How many understand that? We need a church family. Everyone should have a pastor over their life. I'm going to get that. That should be happening. Uh, so this, this tonight, today, we're going to go over the story of the church and welcome you as an official member. You might be saying, this is my church. I've been here for years. Make it official then. We'll even give you a membership card. And once you get that membership card, you get pulled over by the police, they let you go. I'm just kidding. So, oh, the way, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. We ask God for help. He's going to help us. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, save me. Forgive me. Set me free. I know 
I've done it my way. But I'm asking you, Lord, to make me a new person. I believe you died on a cross, rose from the dead. You paid the full price for all my sins so that I could be forgiven and be set free. Jesus, I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. I am saved. I am born again. From this day forward, I'll live for you. Love you and love everyone. Fill my heart. Fill my heart with your love. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Everyone that came up here, we got one more step. We're going to pray with you and make sure we get your information. We got Holy Warriors 1, 2, and 3. These are our classes. They're going to be available this Tuesday, next Sunday. Take your next step. Growing. You can't grow without taking a next step commitment. You can't grow without taking a next step commitment. For some of you, the membership class is your next step commitment. That's how you're going to grow. It's not going to be accident. Love you guys. Remember this, if God's for you, there's no one can come against you. Go out there and love somebody. Show them Jesus. Love you guys so much.